So, Lucas, who's your favourite edgy character from a video game? You know who it is, Carl. Is it Dark Pit? It's Dark Pit! Of course it is! <laughs> okay, so Lucas, as per usual, would you like to tell the lovely folks at home what today's Wikipedia Weekends is about? We are talking about the famous, the infamous Shadow the Hedgehog game. Well, I think you got that wrong. Shadow the Hedgehog. Oh, yeah. We are discussing Edgy the Hedgy himself, specifically his self-titled video game, and we'll be referring to the Wikipedia page on that game, which is titled simply Shadow the Hedgehog video game. Um, would you like to hear some background information on it, Lucas? I think Let's that, go for it. So we're all on the same page, which is the one on my screen right now, which is Shadow the Hedgehog, I'm only pronouncing it that way, is a 2005 platform game developed by Sega Studios. Stay winning, Sega. The former United States division of Sonic Team and published by Sega. And I love that all the Sonic games are made by Sonic Team, but one of my favourite ever running gags in like a playthrough is when the best friends play through Shadow the Hedgehog and keep referring to it as Shadow Team. <laughs> and that playthrough is legendary and I implore people to go look it up because, and I shit you not, the game crashes on the credits. Oh no! Midway through where they're all going, a bold effort by Shadow Team, an amazing game, and the game crashes. <laughs> what an amazing game! Anyway, the clip will be in now. No, we gotta wait for the hidden ending. No, there is no hidden ending. There's totally a hidden ending. Is there? Have yeah, faith in Shadow Team. Okay, because if you, if there's no hidden ending, then... Um, what are you What are you gonna do? I'm not gonna what say gonna that... No, I'm not gonna say that you're liars. I'm just gonna blame it on it being a shitty game. So it better have a, a an Well, you know, that's your opinion. <laughs> and it's o you know, that's Matt, it's okay to have <laughs> That's like one of my favourite bits ever because the the bit they have throughout the video is I think it's Liam and Woolly uh, like just basically proper hyping up how good the game is yep. to piss off Matt. And he's like, no, stop trying to get hype. It's not hype, it's Shadow. And then the game crashes on the credits as if the game itself is trying to commit suicide. Oh, God. Which reminds me of our favourite ever Smash Bros moment. So, Luke, at the beginning, you said your favourite edgy character is Dark Pit. Yes, he Would is. Would you like to explain to the audience why that is? Because this is this fucking happened. I confirm I was there and I nearly died. So, when Super Smash Bros Ultimate came out... Yes. I, uh, I had, time. you know, you and another friend round to come and play the game, enjoy the game as it is, and you know, over time you have to unlock all of the characters. And you have to beat them in a fight. If you and beat them, they join your team. If they exactly. beat you, they don't. And I think there was a, a huge thing about when the game first came out, the AI's too good. And the AI was like dunking people and they weren't getting like Captain Falcon and, and stuff like that. And there was quite a few times when over the day we got dunked on by AI and lost that character, yeah. Didn't unlock that character. But that changed when Dark Pit entered the fray because we all jokingly said, as it said, a new challenger arrives, Dark Pit. And we all said in our drunken states, oh, Lucas, jump off the edge so Dark Pit will never be on your roster screen so we never have to pick him because we don't like that character. And Lucas, what happened when the match started? So the match started and immediately before I could move, Dark Pit runs off the edge and dies. <laughs> and pulls himself into the game. <laughs> he forced us to unlock himself. And this is the best bit because, Lucas, you own two copies of Super Smash Bros. Ultimate, correct? I do, yeah. I have Four two different reasons. switches. Yeah, what yeah. happened the next time you unlocked Dark Pit? The exact same thing. He just walked off the edge again. <laughs> That's like me on my copy of Fighter Z, where I I spent more money buying the DLC separately, so I don't have Bardock in my <laughs> game. <laughs> anyway, the game follows Shadow the Hedgehog, a creation of Dr. Eggman's grandfather, Professor Gerald Robotnik. I did not know that. Carl, let's not get into Sonic Law. Dr. Gerald Rob. Do you know what that reminds me of? That reminds me of Star Fox, which sent us on the adventures of one Fox McCloud. An anthropomorphic fox creature who like flies in a space she calls it the great fox. Yes. What's his dad called? James. <laughs> he called his son <laughs> Fox and he's a fox. And like, you know, all of the other characters, you know, Falco's a bit on the nose, you know, yeah. Slippy the frog and Peppy the head. No, yeah. Fox the fox. Yeah, Fox the fox. Like That's like calling your son a son. <laughs> Fucking hell. Anyway, so Shadow the Hedgehog introduces third-person shooter elements and non-linear gameplay. Non-linear is fucking correct. Uh, because obviously, yeah, this game's all over the place. Um, to the Sonic franchise, to defeat enemies, Shadow can use a variety of weapons and special attacks. And what kind of weapons, Carl? Oh, he uses guns. Just Shadow's got a gun. That's why I think this game is so amazing. It's like, it's such a misstep. It's such a, just a 
a misunderstanding of what the Sonic fandom wanted, where uh, it is everything that people thought was cool when they're 14 years old. Exactly. Let's give him a motorcycle and a gun. Yeah. Well, I think he actually rides a low rider in one of them. He does, yeah. yeah. And then, like, he cocks a machine gun like a shotgun. That's how machine guns work, out. Yeah, because obviously cocking the shotgun's a cool thing to do. And we have an entire video discussing the idea of edgelords at length, so we won't, like, retread that ground too much. But, like... The way I have always in, like, interpreted the term edge is when it's trying too hard. Oh yeah. Uh, like Sephiroth, like, he's edgy, but the character kind of gets away because he has a very simple, clean design. He does, yeah, yeah. Contrast that with Cloud from Advent Children. Oh god, Where yeah. now, instead of wearing like, his, his classic iconic outfit, he's wearing all black, he's got the leather trench coat on, he's got a sword that splits into seven other swords. Trying too hard. And then let's take it to Kingdom Hearts level, where there's just belt buckles everywhere. Everywhere, yeah. Everyone's got our belt buckles. I don't know how many belts they have. And he's got like bandages wrapped around yeah. his sword, he's got the oh, one god. wing. It's like, yeah. It's over design is the way I've always seen it. And I think Shadow the Hedgehog is like, it's the perfect encapsulation of it, where Sonic is such a perfect design for a mascot character. Yeah. It's like, no, let's make it black. But it can't just be black, it has to have red accents on it. Of course it yeah. does. And then he has to have a gun, and then he's got to have a motorcycle, and then he's got to not care about anybody, and he's got to have a robot, and then he's got to meet his mate Gerald. <laughs> it's so bad. I, I don't get this, this must be a mistake, because there's a section that says gameplay. This is a Sonic game we're talking about. So anyway, <laughs> let's find out what's going. Shadow the Hedgehog is a, a, a platform game that incorporates elements of action adventure. I think you should put that as theoretically a platform <laughs> game, because platforming that game's a nightmare. Have you played it? Oh, I've, yeah, I've played it. Like the on. homing dash that makes you home off the edge. Yeah. And just kills you instantly. 3D Sonic games. So bad. Each level is completed by undertaking a mission, and each mission is labeled hero, dark, or normal. Surely Dark should be normal for yeah. Shadow. It's called Shadow for fuck's you sake. You know what? It should have been Hero, Dark and Edge. <laughs> just, just Edge, edgier, edgiest. <laughs> Fucking edgy the hedgy man. The Hero missions involve completing tasks for the Sonic series. I don't care. Let, let's... I, 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 I don't care. You know what, Carl? Fuck it, let's this, get to what bit you care about. Right, this goes on for so long. The only interesting bit is this bit, which I think is actually kind of impressive. Each level features cutscenes that advance the story, and several levels also feature boss battles. There are 326 possible paths to take in Shadow the Hedgehog, and each pathway is individually named. So there are 326 different endings in this game, depending on what combination of hero, dark, and normal you decide to choose. The worst part is, you won't even want to play through the game once. Yeah. Like, you won't want to do it! <laughs> uh, so, we've got it though, but new gameplay features distinguish Shadow from previous Sonic games. For example, Shadow can use guns to combat enemies. <laughs> so, what do you think? Like, this, I just remember that, that very first cutscene, it's just Shadow's got a gun. And it's like, <laughs> could this be a more obvious and desperate attempt to shy away from, like, you know, the cutesy kid image of Sonic. Yep. Because I forget who I saw sum it up, but it's this great breakdown of why Sonic is so fucking lame. Because it is Sonic is an answer to Mario, mm -hmm. and he's trying to be cool. The thing about being cool, though, is being cool is, like, you've got to be counter to what is currently relevant. But what's currently relevant when the thing's released will not always be, like, the thing that you're rebelling well, against. Well, yeah, because it's very much a product of its times. Sonic was 90s, like the Attitude Era. Yeah, like that's what Sonic was. Yeah, and that's what you have, and that's why it's dated so heavily, and why it's like it just seems so bad and desperate now. And then you jump into the noise where that's not the case. So Shadow had to come along to try and take the mantle. Yeah, and it has to. I mean, obviously, what was cool back then isn't cool anymore. So it just comes across as trying too hard. Whereas Mario is timeless. Because Mario is not trying, it's not a response to anything, it's just its own thing. Exactly. Because it's, I just think that was a really good way of breaking it down. The reason Sonic is so lame and why he's like, got such a fragmented fan base is because he's constantly changing what he's about. Like, he has no set message. Right. Right. So we've got two sections we go to Lucas. Development or reception? Let's go to reception, It's, it's got to be, okay. So let's just go through, like, let's go hard numbers, because, like, you know, numbers don't lie. So Metacritic um, gives the game on GameCube a 51 out of 100. On Xbox, it got 49 out of 100, and on PS2, 45 out of 100. So, the GameCube version is the definitive way to like, you know, experience Shadow, apparently. That is like the way. The, the most definitive way to, to do it is a 51 out of 100. And then the best thing you always do is you look for where, who are the people who gave it the high reviews. So, um, no. Who got bought out that week? Um, OXM UK gave it 7 out of 10. That's the best. 
Uh, that I can see, yes. No, wait, oh, sorry. Okay. Game trailers gave it 8.3 out of 10. And Nintendo Power gave it 8 out of 10. So I want to now look at what other games have got an 8 out of 10 so you can play. So can you do a little bit of research on that and just find another game from that era that got an 8 out of 10 from one of the publications? Okay, yeah. Just, and just put like a little fact bar below so we know how good they think Shadow the Hedgehog is compared, like, in comparison. When it turns out it's like, oh, Metroid Prime got like the same score as Shadow the Hedgehog. So, Shadow the Hedgehog received generally unfavorable reviews from critics, many of which were highly critical of its gameplay mechanics and differences from other Sonic games. And there are about 16 fucking like hyperlinks after that to click, so you can go see how like true that statement is. However, it was voted the best game of 2005. By who? By Official Jetix Magazine in their Reader Awards. And it was named the best platformer of 2005 by Nintendo Power in their Reader's Choice Awards. I was going to say, the thing that points, like, it's the, true readers, to this, yeah. the Reader Choice. But I just want, like, again, Lucas, just go look at what other games came out in 2005 and just put a few of them below us so people know what those fans like, thought Shadow was better than. Because I'm pretty sure like, that year you might have got, like, a Final Fantasy X or something drop in. You've got some good games, I know. If, of, if it's like, the PS2 era, there's bound to be at least one good game. Yes. If, if from that era, that apparently Shadow was better than. But Carl, Carl, The Edge. <laughs> the Edge wins out. You can't compete with The Edge. The Edge is unstoppable. Oh my god. Shadow the Hedgehog was also a commercial success. Sega reported that 1.59 million units were sold in the year of release. Oof. And 470,000 units sold in the US from March 2006 to 2007. For total sales, at least 2.6 million. I would point out, though, that part of these sales is because it was released as part of the budget lines, greatest hits, and platinum range for the PS2. <laughs> so basically, they released, like, the shit budget. It's like, Anthem sales are probably really fucking good because you can buy it for a fiver. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Did you see they took the Christmas decorations down, finally? Oh, really? We're nearly in the third month of, like, 2020, they took down the Christmas decorations. Oh, man. Don't worry, Anthem, I anticipate a video where you feature prominently. So, many critics derided the game's sense of maturity for a Sonic game, especially the addition of guns and other weapons. <laughs> oh Staff writer for Game Informer, Matt Hagelson, said, Not only is this new adult interpretation of adults, like in big air quotes, painfully dumb, it's also ill-advised and almost feels like a betrayal to long-time fans. 8.3. <laughs> what? 8.3 out of 10. Uh, Eurogamer staff writer Tom Bramell felt that the game's other selling point, its darker edge, is not really meant for us. Um, game spy writer Patrick Klepik thought similarly. In contrast, Nintendo Power staff writer, who gave it an 8 out of 10, remember, um, said this darker take on the Sonic universe succeeds, for the most part, giving the series a bit of an edge without going overboard on violence. Smash cuts to the opening cut scene where Shadow executes a man in cold blood with a gun. <laughs> You can literally run around and just kill the humans yeah. in that game. You can go around and just watch people die, or like um, just homing dash them off the edge of a building while shooting at like, every gun in the world. Like you can rainstorm a civilian. <laughs> in addition, official Xbox magazine reassured readers, don't worry, Shadow the Hedgehog isn't, and I quote here, half as urban or as gangster as it first seems. Like, oh, oh like. That reminds me of the moment in video games that made me feel the most uncomfortable. And it's the very first season of The Walking Dead. When it's you, the character, Lee, a black man, mm. and you're figuring out, like, oh, how do we get into this place? And the, your guy in your team, Kenny, just goes, well, surely you can figure it out, can't you? It's like, what do you mean? It's like, you can pick that lock. Oh. You're urban. Oh. It's like, Lee's like a, a college professor who teaches history. Yeah. Like, what? What is it? Oh, God. So, yeah, official Xbox magazine leaning into that edge, oh, I can God. see. Huh. Reviewers also criticised the game's controls, especially Shadow's homing attack causing unexpected character deaths. <laughs> you know, oh. one of the main mechanics of the game. And it just makes you just fly off the edge. Other complaints focused on mechanics, weapons, and vehicles. Greg Mueller of GameSpot felt the guns were nearly useless because of the lack of a target lock on manual aim. So you've got guns that you can't aim. In contrast, that writer I mentioned earlier from Nintendo Power says, blasting Shadow's foes with a wide variety of weapons that is disposable is just plain fun. Like, I think that just highlights like how important it is to teach media literacy at school. That you have, like, I think it's objective, like, how bad Shadow is just on, like, you know, a mechanical level. It's true, yeah. Yeah. And then you've got this guy going, it's really fun to shoot the gun. So it's not, it doesn't feel good. Like, the game just doesn't feel good to play. It's like, but I like shooting the enemies with my guns. Maybe, maybe feel... 
also just vet your staff a little bit. Right, do you know what that reminds me of? It is the web swinging in like Amazing Spider-Man. Okay. It's like, do you know the web swinging in Spider-Man 2? Yes, like, It's yeah. the best web swing that's ever been in a Spider-Man game. Until Spider-Man PS4. Yes, and like every single time a new Spider-Man game came out, they always ask the same question, does it have good web swinging? No. It has like Spider-Man attached to a blimp flying through the sky. Yeah. And it's terrible and it's awful. And, and I, I had a chance to interview the guy who was solely responsible for that mechanic for oh, the right, like, okay, job yeah. I had. And he told me, yeah, I've been trying to put that mechanic in Spider-Man since the PS1 days and I had it working. But every time we handed it to playtesters, they couldn't make Spider-Man swing by pressing one button, so they told us to take it out. Oh no. So because they were idiots and didn't because you didn't press a button and something cool happens immediately, they didn't like it. It's almost like sometimes it's really satisfying to work towards a goal know, and progress. Get yeah. But he said that's why they took it out, because obviously immediate reaction to it from reviewers and people like that were, well, it's difficult to do straight away and I don't feel like Spider-Man. So, but you will when you get good at it. And then we just have a load of shitting on the level design and the replay okay. value, which is criticised as being almost non-existent, despite the multitude of paths that it's possible to take through the game. Because you can burn through um, Shadow the Hedgehog in about half an hour, if you just beeline straight for the ending yeah, of every yeah. level. Because you can ignore every single enemy and not fight them. And it's actually easier to do that because if you try to fight something, you fly off the edge. Oh god, it's so bad. Which is weird, she thinks Shadow will be right on that edge. 